My name is Marilyn Margold. I'm the Director of Living Collections at the South Florida Museum. I don't think anything that was on the endangered list has come off the endangered list as far as larger uh, marine animals are concerned. One of the things that we're better able to do is keep track of them. You know, 10, 20 years ago, we weren't watching as closely, so our awareness level in terms of what was out there was, you know, not as significant as it is today. Now counts are being done, you know, state, certainly statewide, um, across the United States and other parts of the world, keeping track of these animals. We are seeing some changes in some populations. Um, it's not significant enough to be able to say they're no longer endangered. It requires a little bit more time and observation. I think the threats to whales and dolphins pretty much remain the same. It's, it's, it's habitat loss, it's um, degradation. In some parts of the world, they're still whaling. Uh, the right whale from the North Atlantic, th their numbers haven't changed hardly at all in the past 15 years, so there hasn't been a lot of recovery spotted for them. So there are still some animals that are struggling, and it really is just um, coming to a global agreement, you know, to keep an eye on, on everything because what, what happens in the ocean, you know, becomes a condition of the earth as a whole. I think in terms of just supporting the ocean, it's just being aware of what you take to the beach with you should leave with you. Through just general education, through websites, um, encouraging people to, to go online and to read uh, whatever it is that strikes their interest, whether it's manatees, whether it's red tide, um, whether it's coral reefs, um, to just become familiar with those issues and they'll start to see how so many of those things are related to each other.